that's the rule of thumb, <laughs> the rule of finger infused oil, which you can go ahead and use to make bombs, dabs, or even just a nice, beautiful infused massage oil. <laughs> Welcome to the Hardcore Herbalist. I'm Jen. I'm your host here today. Um, and welcome back into my herbal kitchen. So today I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about making infused oils. It's the first step in the process of making any kind of herbal salve. Also making a lip balm or a hand balm or muscle salve. All of those things starts with an infused oil. Now, you can get your herbs that you infuse the oils with at a natural food store. You can buy them at, um, at a farmer's markets. Um, you can grow them in your own yard and then dry them. I would only ever recommend making an oil infusion with dry herbs because if you, add, if you use fresh herbs, there's water inside of the stems of the herbs. If you introduce water into your oil, into your infused oil, there's more of a chance of uh, rancidity down the road. You're not going to have as long lasting of a product. If you're making like the tiniest little batch for yourself, eh, you know, it, if it lasts one year instead of three or four years, well, that's okay. It's only for you. But if you're planning on ever giving this away to anybody, even at a small scale, you're going to want it to last for as long as it possibly can um, and and therefore um, I would recommend using um, only dried uh, only dried um, herbs so right here what I'm holding right in my hand I'm holding dried calendula flowers which are in, included in um, several of the um, infused oils that I include in my other products now um, sometimes when I'm making uh, when I'm infusing oil I don't bother grinding this up or powdering it very much because um, I'm going to be heating up the oil and stirring the product and to increase the amount of surface area of herb that comes into contact with the oil. You do want to either uh, kind of work the work the dried herbs together in your skin to make them smaller and smaller pieces, or you'll use a coffee grinder. A, a, not the coffee grinder that you use for your coffee, a different one. Buy a separate one if you're going to grind your herbs up. And uh, and you just put it, the herbs into your coffee grinder. This is just dried flowers, calendula flowers, or marigold is the other name for these flowers. And they're found out in, I grew these actually in my fish garden. I'm going to be doing a video in the next few weeks about my fish garden, so stay tuned for that. I'm covering this up and then it doesn't take much. It's going to take like one or two pulses. Okay, four pulses. And now you're going to see it's much finer now when I pour oil over this and heat it up, which is what uh, the oil infusion process basically entails. It's going to get make um, more of the properties of the calendula flowers come into the oil. And then when I strain these calendula flower solids out, the oil is going to have the same properties as the flowers themselves have on their own. Okay, that's the whole point of an infused oil. So what kind of properties specifically do calendula flowers have? Well, it speeds the healing of uh, cuts wounds, burns, it also speeds the healing of um, deep tissue 
type of um, sore muscle, pulled muscles, strained, strained ligaments, that kind of thing. Okay, sore tendons. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do, do the herbs that I would put in my sore muscle rub base. So, right here. What does lobelia do? As it helps to relax your muscles. This one here is comfrey root powder. This also has really good tissue healing properties. I use both powdered herbs and dried leafy, uh, uh, just like chopped herbs in my salves. That's a nice red hot pepper. Why, oh, why do we use cayenne pepper? Because cayenne is a warming, it has warming properties. It helps to relax, it helps bring blood and circulation to the area wherever you're applying it. So does ginger root. You want to sneeze from the cayenne. <laughs> Every time with the cayenne pepper. All right, the last ingredient that I'm going to add is arnica. This is arnica flowers. Again, they're dried. They got that little milkweed quality to them, little feathery stuff. So I'm going to add some arnica flowers. Why? Arnica flowers are great for healing as well. They're fantastic at healing bruises specifically and also because of that reason, sore muscles. So I'm gonna go ahead and add arnica flowers too. So, so far I have measured out all of my dry herbs and here they are in this jar. The jar is now going to, I'm gonna be adding some olive oil to the jar. And now how much olive oil? The Here's the story. As long as you cover the herbs with olive oil and, the, and there's always enough olive oil added that it's gonna be over the top of your herbs and, and because your herbs are going to, um, they're going to absorb some of the oil, you might need to add a little bit more so that it's at least a finger or two fingers higher than the level of the herbs. Um, that's the rule of thumb, <laughs> the rule of fingers. Um, here are my different herbs. Here at the bottom is where I started with calendula flowers. And then there's lobelia, pomfrey root, cayenne pepper, ginger root, um, arnica flowers on top. All right, great, wonderful. So now I'm at the point where we're ready to take our oil infusion to the next stage of the game. So far, I've added my dried herbs and I've added my oil. The oil is in its process of working its way south down to the bottom. I can always shake up my container a little bit. Shake it up, right? Now the oil and the herbs are all mixing up. So the next key ingredient, we have our dried herbs, we have our olive oil. And the, and the next ingredient that we need is heat. Not a lot of heat, a low heat. And now there's three different ways that I know of for us to proceed. We can either take it on the stove top, 
And what I mean by that is with a pan, you run some water in, into the pan, about one or two inches, take your jar, put it into the pan, put it on your stove on very low heat, low heat. You, the, the hottest you want is for to start to see those little tiny, start seeing those little tiny water bubbles from, it's just starting to boil, but not exactly boiling, okay? You do not want to boil it too much because you can crack your jar. And I've cracked jars before. Um, it, it's it just it's a bummer because you're like, oh man, I just wasted all of that good herbs, all of those good oils, because I now I have water mixed in, and you don't want water to mix in with your infused oil. So that's not my preferred method. That's well, that's a good way if you're using a very making a very small amount. Like this is a pretty small amount for what I'm used to making. Um, okay, this is a this is a significant batch. And this is a very similar infused oil to the one that I actually am demonstrating us making today. This is the infused oil that I use to make my Wad Bomb Muscle Relief Rub. Okay, and these are giant, you know, half gallon size batch. Or even though it's very quick, I don't prefer doing the stovetop method because it takes about two to four hours of that very cautious boiling where you're like, maybe gonna turn the heat all the way off for a little while. Then you turn it on just a tiny bit and then you stir and that you always keep on stirring and agitating the oil, spreading the oil around, trying to get it to touch as many little tiny molecules of dried herb as possible. That's the whole point of it, right? Or on the other side of the spectrum, you got your stove top two to four hour method that's quick and a little dangerous. Then you also have your put it outside in the sun for a month method, which is definitely not a very um quick way to get things done but man is it not dangerous there's really hardly any weather that you're going to encounter where it'll be so hot it's going to crack your glass plus it's a really like kind of cool old schooly way of doing it some herbalists will actually infuse their oil from new moon to full moon right so um that's a i think it's a two-week period or you can just infuse it for like two months or one month or something like that. I find that that is too long and I'm not that patient, so that's not the way I use. I choose to go. The way I choose to go is the way in between, not the slowest, not the fastest. My way takes three days, three and a half days, and basically I use a slow cooker, and it's a sort of double boiler type of situation, but I, I basically put the slow cooker on the absolute lowest setting, which is the warm setting. You probably know if you've used these before, that low is like hot enough. You could cook a whole chicken in here um, on low all day or whatever. It's the like kind of thing where you plug it in, put it on low, and then you come home and you have this piping hot thing of chili that's like boiling over. It's, it gets really hot in here. And, and the, that's the whole point of these kind of tools is that you can leave it unguarded plugged into your wall, and it will cook for you while you're out of the house. So I like this method because you can leave it unattended. It's not dangerous. It's not taking a ton of electricity out of your wall. Um, and, and you don't have to be like watching it, crouching over it, or worrying. However, uh, we're not setting it on low because even low is too hot. High is certainly too hot. You want to go on warm. You want to use the warm setting. That's the setting that we're going to use. And that is the setting that like, you wouldn't really necessarily cook something on warm, but we're going to use it for our oil infusion across the board. If you don't have a crock pot that has a warm setting, all you have is low and high, don't bother using this to try to infuse oil. It's going to crack your glass or the water will boil away too fast and, and then it will crack your glass. So you want, and you aren't going to be able to leave it unattended. If you're going to use this and have to attend it all the time, it was better if you use the stovetop method. It's way easier to deal with temperature fluctuations, wild temperature fluctuations with this than it is with this. This is harder to control, and when the temperature gets too hot, it's going to be hard to cool it down. So, um, just so, because I don't want any banging around to happen, I will put a clean dish towel into the slow cooker bottom, and then I'm going to add my jar with a lid, 
and then I'm going to take my water and I'm going to pour it in and I'm going to fill it up. I don't want, uh, depending on the size of your jar, you don't want it to be like tipping over and floating away, right? But, you, you know, I have this thing. I can keep adding water too. It's not against the rules. I have it basically up to here. You want it at least as high as like two thirds of the way up, but it's going to warm up every, all of the contents of the jar. I would probably add enough water so that it would be basically up to here. And then plug it in and write a little note to yourself on your paper that says, I started it today. It's Sunday afternoon. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon, it will be ready to come out. And then I can strain it, uh, strain all of the solid herbs out, and I can uh, get my um, my infused liquid olive oil that's got all of the good properties of cayenne pepper, ginger, calendula, comfrey, arnica, obelia, all of those properties all together in one oil. And that's Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your attention and your time, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope you have a really good time creating infused oils with, uh, with all natural ingredients, all natural herbs, and, and olive oil. Have a great day.